So the enemy tries to fire darts in our head and we have to stand strong, as that scripture said, and bring every thought into captivity. One Chinese proverb says this, you can't stop birds flying over your head, but you can stop them nesting in your hair. And I thought that was a great illustration of what we need to do. Now, how to differentiate uh, the thoughts in your head. Uh, you can tell the difference between the three sources of thoughts quite easily. Firstly, the nature of the thought. First ask yourself, is it kind? Is it loving? Is it inspirational? Wise? Does it bring you healing? Then it's God. Is it vicious or destructive, condemnation and negativity? It's usually the enemy. And sometimes we do a little bit of bashing ourselves as well. But God will give you the insight or, you know, to take that thought captive no matter what. And you've got to go back to how God made you. The enemy tries to plant thoughts in our head and God speaks to us in our thoughts. It could be logical and analytical, your thought. And sometimes that's God and sometimes it's yourself. You know, it's like Jesus or God said to Isaiah, come, let us reason together. We need our our mind and our brain at work. And we'll talk a bit about the brain in another session, uh, the different spheres of the brain. Romans 8, 6 says this in the Amplified. Now the mind of the flesh, which is a sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death is that compromises all the miseries arising from both from here and thereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul peace but none but for now and ever for now and forever isn't that great you know we have the peace of god that passes all understanding when we really know that he is god satan is an accuser an adversary a liar a destroyer a condemner and a murderer and holy spirit is totally opposite he's an edifier comforter teacher creator divine lover healer a giver of life so it's easy to tell where the thoughts are coming from when you look at it and you just say now what is that you know is that from god and just put those things down and just know that you are able to find out where they're coming from and you don't have to be ambiguous about it so how is it that we can distinguish the source uh, of the thoughts we have other than the character of the content well here's another way usually god is pretty spontaneous so it's the way in which the thought comes it's something similar to a mobile phone you know all of a sudden you're about your business or in your office or cooking or whatever you're doing tending the children and a thought will come to you or it might it's an example of it you're busy doing all those things and you get an sms all of a sudden you know and you think oh and like it's a little wake up call oh someone wants me you know and we've got to tune into that sort of thing it helps us to be practical in the way god works it's not super spiritual um you know hype type of thing it's just a natural flow of our life through christ you know and out of the blue someone calls you and sometimes god is calling you to something but we have to say yes lord is that Speak, your servant is listening, as Samuel did in the temple. Has everyone ever been in an experience like this? You, you're driving along and all of a sudden you think of someone you haven't seen for a long time and you're wondering how they are. And you think, oh, I wonder how they're going. I must go and see them or must go and ring them. And that's a good idea. Respond to that thought because God could be telling you to contact them. They may, may need your help. They may need your prayer. If you can't contact them, I usually just pray for them until that burden lifts or until that, those thoughts leave me and I've, I forget about it. And I've, I figure out that, you know, I've prayed enough and God has dealt with a situation. I've had that quite a few times with my children as they grew up, you know, when they're late home and you worry about them and you tell them to be home at one o'clock and it's three o'clock in the morning, you know, as you do when you're young and, and forget the time, you know, you don't know what time it is when you're out having a good time. And, you know, I've I've had intervention prayers, even dreams during the night, 
that could have been a really disaster had God not woken me and prayed. So don't ignore ignore God's flashes to you or dreams or however he comes to you or teaches you to hear his voice because we're all individual and there's several ways. So it's not just the thoughts in your head, you know, it's something different God is trying to communicate with you. Another way of, sp of God speaking is the word pagar, which means the spontaneous thoughts. That's another word. It means intercession. So it's a dis dissecting of right across your thoughts and a thought comes to you about somebody or something or, you know, you feel that there's been a problem, an accident or even something like that can come to your mind. Don't just dismiss it. Give it to the Lord and pray about it anyway. Better to be safe than sorry and knowing that someone had an accident and you didn't bother to pray. But God doesn't give you a burden unless he knows you're going to fulfill it. So, you know, just follow what he says and we'll always end up doing what the Father tells us to do. God's voice appears to us by chance, a chance idea, like I've just explained to you. A spontaneous thought that comes out of nowhere. God's voice is our spirit of, or heart in it that God speaks to us through his spirit. And it feels sometimes when you get it, like a bubbling up inside. It registers in your mind and it's like a spontaneous accidental thought. That's another way of looking at it too. It crosses our path of logical thoughts. You know, we're on our way driving home and concentrating on driving and then all of a sudden we have a flash about someone. And that's what it is. John 6, 63 says, It is the spirit who gives life and the flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Now that word there that Jesus says, the word I speak to you, that word, there's two words for, for uh, word in the Greek. One is logos, which is talking about the written word of God, the Bible. The other is rhema, which is the quickened word of God. One that comes and makes life out of what it's and what, have you, what you're hearing or what you're thinking. Quite often you've had a verse in the Bible that's come alive like that, I'm sure, and you just know you've read it hundreds of times and never seen that before, and now you understand something about God you hadn't understood before. This bubbling up inside you, there's a little bit of, I call excitement, not natural excitement, but an excitement like in your spirit man, and uh, there's a word called nabar, which means bubbling thoughts, because they bubble up. The Hebrew word for prophet or prophesy, you know, literally it means to bubble up. Uh, to prophesy is to bubble up. And you'll have that, oh, I just need to say this. I feel God wants to say this. There's a, not an urgency, but an urging rather. And we say, well, what does he want me to say? And you know, you judge the thought and it's it's living life and bringing wholeness to people that might hear it. So, you know, be open to that, that you might prophesy and encourage the body of Christ in doing that. And I hope you learn from one another as you share your experiences over this series, that you will learn that, you know, you may be able to be brave enough to prophesy in a group that you wouldn't in a church. It's a good idea to start practicing that, you know, we're all in a safe place so it doesn't matter and you can't get it wrong you can just try again you know so the thoughts are that when you're prophetic and wanting to prophesy um, you must pay attention to those thoughts we are a prophetic people not all are prophets but we are a prophetic people God spoke to us through prophet Joel saying that he will in the end times he'll give visions and dream dreams and you know your daughters and sons will prophesy that's now, you know, we, we need to be practicing the gifts. But that again is another teaching. Now, there's another word which, which is said, I think it's Zed, Z-I-Y-D, Zide or something like that. I'm not sure. It's a Hebrew word means false prophet. It literally means to boil over that sometimes the false prophet were trying to cook up things. They were telling the children of Israel that they were safe, that God wasn't going to send them away to Babylon, you know, that the prophets had said they would, such as Jeremiah and Daniel. They they don't know what they're talking about. Trust us. And, of course, you want to hear the good news, don't you? <laughs> so many would believe them, but they were liars. They were bubbling up, cooking something up because they wanted to be noted, um, I guess, you know. So they always try to do that. 
and it's no different today although we don't treat prophets today like we did in the old testament because prophets today they guide and affirm they don't they don't tell you or condemn you or send you without you knowing that God is sending you. If a prophet says to you, God's telling me you're going to India, then I'll say, thank you very much. And I will pray about that. <laughs> That's what you do. And you must hear from God. You can't be sent on the word of a prophet these days because there's so many people that, you know, don't understand prophetic in this day and age. Anyway, I'll keep on the track. <laughs> As we commune in our relationship with God, uh, there's a spiritual river inside us that does flow if we open up the gates. And quite honestly, we need to do more of that. Our thoughts will flow through the Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our lives. In John 7, 37, 39, it says, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those who believed him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So you see, God has been speaking to you ever since you were born again. And I had, I've had a revelation myself, personally, how God was speaking to me at the age of 12. And I didn't understand then. It's been a, an understanding an insight that I've got later uh, as God has brought me into that place and shown me that this is fact, you know. And uh, I didn't even know I was born again when I was 12, but I thought I was born again much later. But, you know, even those things we don't know for sure uh, and only God knows. But it doesn't really matter as long as you know now that you're born again and you've got new life in Christ. So you, we just have to be taught to recognise these things and practise them in the thoughts we have, you know, be more mindful of our thinking. Um, Elijah had a school for the prophets. They taught the prophetic much more. I don't know about much more than these days, but in those days, they taught about the prophetic ministry and we need more teaching on it to keep people on the straight and narrow in our day. The prophets uh, were taught in Ramah, Bethel, Gilgal, Jericho, Carmel and Samaria. That's according to the history and uh, it was called the School of the Prophets. And they do have some today, which is great to see. You know, the, the Australian Prophetic Council is, is one where um, people who are called to be prophets can be um, giving their word to other prophets to judge and put out on that Facebook to know what the Spirit is saying to Australia. It's very good to have unique prophets like Lana Varsi um, is an Australian prophetess. And Roma Waterman is, is uh, emerging well as one, I believe. So these people are prophetic people, but they're not to be judged like other prophets. You know, if their word doesn't come to pass, it doesn't mean they're false prophets and we've got to stone them. That's Old Testament. <laughs> but we've got to give them grace to make mistakes, just like we do, and so be gracious to them. So what's happened in that, what I'm trying to point across is that we need our spiritual senses uh, to be trained and to practice to take us further in God, not just hearing his voice, but being able to speak on God's behalf and prophesy. And a lot of times it's not just prophecy. You know, um, when Pastor Chris preaches and Beck preaches and other preachers come and preach, we hear God's word and it is a prophetic word quite often. Uh, you know, it's teaching the word of God. It's prophetic teaching. So we should pay attention and not just disregard the words that are spoken. My dad used to say to me, because we were in a denominational church for years, and, my, and I used to say, oh, I don't want to go to church, it's boring, you know. <laughs> and my dad said to me once, and I've never forgotten, he used to call me kiddo, and he said, kiddo, you know, if you listen, you're going to learn something, you know. And that sort of struck me. He said, you'll learn maybe just one thing, but you will learn something. And so I thought that was precious as I grew up and understood really what he said. So it's very important that this river within us be allowed to flow and we have to open the gates ourselves to do that. God wants to, you know, the water's pushing up against and we're resisting, you know, pushing it back, stacking up things so it won't flow <laughs> for whatever reason. We're too busy, you know, not paying attention to what God is trying to do in us. And that's very important. So remember, God is speaking to you at all times. He's always going to speak to you if you stop and listen. 
He doesn't do it just nine to five and then goes to bed. There's no sleeping in heaven. <laughs> so what I'm saying here is that God knows you and he wants to have a communion with you, a relationship with you because he loves you and he wants you closer to him. He wants to tell you so your fears are calmed and you're loved to the very end of days. He said, I'm always with you. And he meant it when he said it. And he's so faithful to his word, you know. I can back that up because I've had years and years of his faithfulness and he's so good. He'll take us through the fire. He'll take us through the water. We won't drown. He's a faithful God. So it's very important to tune into God and wait upon God. And you know that through. As you read your Bible, you know you've read those familiar passages that come alive to you hundreds of times before. They haven't, but just once they do. And that's good news. So as we pray, we listen to God. I just want to give you one example before I close tonight. And I've just had recently, just sitting down and I was quite anxious about things I had to do. And it just seemed to be too much. And I, I wanted to spend time with God, but I was torn in both, you know, how am I going to get all this done if I don't? I mean, I should know this by now, but, you know, you get into different mindsets and you forget, you know, and, um, I just said, Lord, I don't know. What am I going to do? And he said, come rest with me. And I thought, oh, okay, Lord. That was a spontaneous thought because I was thinking, how am I going to get it done? And then the Lord says, come rest with me. I said, oh, okay, Lord, I'll do that. So I leant back and just let everything go and I just surrendered it to him. And, you know, while I was sitting there, he said, you're laboring. I give you permission to rest. And that was just, I would never give myself permission to rest. I knew it was him and he wanted me to rest. And then the scripture came to me, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And I knew that was what he was saying. Come to me, all ye who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean in me, for I'll have, you will find rest for your soul. And I surely did. It was such a precious time, just a f few minutes it only took a few minutes for the Lord, when I rested myself, to come in and start to speak to me. And I pray that you will experience that even this week. Make time for God. Make a little room that you might um, find him in the presence of his beautiful Holy Spirit. That he will teach you how to commune with him in new ways as we go through this series. So that's the end of lesson one. So God bless and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.